Zach with Wingard Wearables. You're one of 12 special people that's going to stick through this video to the end. And today's video is Hidden in Hand, how you can hold your Wingard Wearables tools in your hand in contacts for self-defense and keep them concealed until the last possible moment. Uh, this video will not go into self-defense advice. It's simply a deeper understanding so you can get uh, as much knowledge about your Wingard wearables tool as po tools as possible for your use. Um, also in this video we've got Bob, our body opponent bag, with the smallest pineapple I've ever seen. Uh, it's Pennsylvania in mid-February and this is the biggest pineapple my wife could find. It's like the size of a baked potato. Um, and I'll be moving around and there'll be a little gut flash. It'll happen. It's just what it is. Uh, also, stick around to the end because I'm going to use the term laser nipples and it's actually going to be pertinent to the discussion. So you got to find out what's happening with that. Anyway, so we're going to start with the quill. If you don't know what the quill is, uh, we have a video on that that will be linked below. Um, but in context for self-defense, the quill, when you make your fist around it, is a spike for your fist. Um, now, the grip that works best for concealing the quill in hand, and the quill is easy to conceal in hand because it's so small, you take your middle and ring fingers, put them in that hook gap, and this is what we call the jab. So I taped this potato-sized pineapple to Bob's chin, okay? So let's see if this holds up. So the jab is just like that. So the spike, very efficient at forced concentration with Minimum force, it penetrates a couple inches into fleshy materials. But people are not pineapples, right? We have bones. So Bob has an orbital socket with a skull. He has a nasal cavity, top of his mouth, bottom of his jaw. In context of self-defense, yeah, you could do a jab or you could do a get off me tool, like push this into a soft structure, hook into the skeletal structure and push away an opponent. Um, now, how do you conceal that in your hand? It's very easy to hold the quill in your hand using your phone, maybe ready to dial the authorities when you're walking in a sketchy area, someone's closing in behind you. Um, but if you don't want to display the quill, just put your index finger in front of it, right? Uh, it looks rather natural to have an index finger out and then drop the index finger right before you use it. So just like that. Um, you can also drop the quill down into a grip we call the haymaker. So this is the same as uh, your middle and ring finger in the hook gap, but it's turning the quill 90 degrees. Now the reason my hands are shaking is it's really cold out here. And we filmed it yesterday and it was cold yesterday and the battery died on the iPad. I'm like still cold from yesterday. So pardon the hand trembles. But the haymaker grip is turning the point of the quill 90 degrees for sort of haymaker or Sort of chin jab. Ooh, the, the pineapple's about to go. Right? Sort of chin jab motion, really confined space, a lot of power behind it. So that's what we call the haymaker grip. Um, and that's also easy to conceal in the hand, right? It's not there till you go out twisting with the wrist and punch forward. So that's how you can conceal the quill in your hand, ready to go. Uh, now, let me set this to the side. I'll clean off the pineapple juice later. Now, can you see the region above my groin? My wife is nodding. It's Valentine's Day. Got my wife checking out my groin. That's always a good thing. This is the dick pic, all right? So we finally got these back in stock. We haven't really done a product video on the dick pic. We do have a video about like sort of our process behind the design of the dick pic. But uh, in short, it is a multi-tool that has a pry bar chisel edge here, a percussive hammer face here, and then this long spike the bottom. So there's lots of practical utility tasks packed in this tool. Um, but also most of this is a grip you can put your hands around. Um, and most ice pick like tools, they have a phrase uh, ice pick grip, you know, for reverse edge stabbing. Uh, you can do that with a dick pick. You also have this chisel edge projecting about an inch from your knuckles. Um, and there are many uh, things out there about how to conceal a short fixed blade or spike in your hand and reverse grip before you deploy it. And I'm not going to cover that. That is not, you know, uh, stuck with uh, this particular tool. You can look up Libre Fighting or other historical sources. There's just 
people have been doing that for centuries, hiding small knives in their hand right before use. Uh, but what I will cover is what's unique about the dick pick as a, an ice pick. You don't have to use it like an ice pick grip. You can also grip this region here around your hand and you have punch grip. You guys may remember RoboCop, the movie, not the bad remake, but the 1980s movie where RoboCop had the data spike, which he stabbed one of the villains with. Uh, this is not built into your body like RoboCop. The punch grip is actually not terribly well supported. Um, it is strong enough for thrusting into flesh and bone uh, targets, but because you have over five inches of spike projecting from what's essentially just pinched between these fingers, it can be deflected. If an opponent has really good reflexes, that sort of thing, they could take that tip of the uh, dick pick offline. So I recommend with uh, using the dick pick, if you're going to grip it um, with as much penetration depth as possible, instead of using it like this, take that haymaker grip. So you're wrapping your thumb on top, your other fingers. This is so much more stable. This is a really firm foundation for five inches of spike coming out of your hands. And you use that for more of a chin jab type aspect. So to hide this in hand, you've drawn the dick pic discreetly. You have this in hand. Uh, the point is laying this way. It's not like pointed at yourself, um, but you have it so that from the opponent's point of view, you're just motioning with your hands, being very accommodating, trying to de-escalate, but if they close in, you have that sort of chin jab type effect. Uh, that's in very confined space, you have over five inches of uh, penetration depth, and you can really put a lot of force behind it. So, anyway, uh, I think that's covered the dick pic. It is just covered in uh, pineapple juice. I gotta wash that. Uh, so let me set that down. So the quill, easy to conceal because it's so tiny. Dick pic, a lot bigger. It's about six and a half inches long, um, but still concealable behind your hand. But what about a tomahawk? And this is where laser nipples are gonna come in, okay? Now our tomahawks go from 11 and a half inches in length all the way up to 16 inches. But they're all very, very light. They're well under a pound. And that means they can be accelerated in a very confined space. We even have a video uh, where we cover uh, penetration and extraction with our tomahawks. I will link to that below. Uh, but you know, if you look at one of our tomahawks, you can draw it bladed, blading your body towards the opponent discreetly, and you can get in this position here and have it in the hand, ready to go, but mostly concealed with your arms. Now, how you do that is more of a stance than necessarily a grip. You put the top of the tomahawk head in your shoulder pocket, okay? Now, it's a cold day. You can probably see my nipples, all right? Now, imagine lasers coming straight out of my nipples, all right? It's important, laser nipples. Top of the tomahawk head in your shoulder pocket, you put pressure on it. You have your uh, knuckles up above your brow, and then your elbows come in and cover the laser beams coming out of your nipples. And so that conceals the handle and most of the tomahawk from your opponent. Now there's a little bit coming out here, but depending on the lighting and the context, you're really not gonna look at that and be like, oh, this guy has a tomahawk in his hands, he can really reach me. Now the reason you might wanna conceal a tomahawk from your opponent, um, you know, you may want them to get within effective reach of your tomahawk. They may be thinking all he's got is, you know, fisty cuffs. I can take a punch, I'm a tough guy, I'm gonna close in, I got my club or a knife or something. Um, and they can get within range and you can chop and lay that chop into them. And no matter how tough a guy is, uh, our tomahawks are designed to be very concentrated against flesh and bone targets, whether it's you know, the forearm or the forehead, uh, that is gonna bury to the handle. That's just gonna be devastating. Um, I love spike tools and knives, quills and dick picks are great, but this is really uh, you know, incapacitating in one blow. That's what you get with a tomahawk. Now, all right, so we're gonna hope the pineapple holds this time on Bob, all right? So in this stance here, and there are a lot of practical advantages to this stance, but one, and we'll go over those in another video, but concealing the tomahawk handle behind the arms. You're in this stance, you can uh, hit and extract. It goes further than the reach of your fist, 
and you know you can penetrate to the handle and extract very quickly. Um, so that's the advantage of that stance. Uh, it's now covered in uh, pineapple goop. Un momento. But that's what a back ripper would look like when it's nice and clean. Um, and this would go well with uh, you know that stance and that confined space and rapid acceleration. You really need a tomahawk that's very light. That's not going to work with a heavier tomahawk that weighs like a pound or more. Uh, the tomahawk I just used weighs 6.2 ounces. This one's probably in that uh, weight range. Uh, you really need that lightweight to accelerate in a compact distance to hit the target um, it, with speed. And you also need concentrated chopping edges, and we nerd out on that in another video. Um, now, what else was I going to cover? We did cover laser nipples, so that's good. It's very cold, uh, so we want to get inside here soon. My wife's was very patient. Um, oh, yeah. So self-defense in general. Um, we started this business in late 2018, and we have had several hundred customers since then, and that's been wonderful. And out of that, several customers have been in self-defense situations where they used their wing guard wearables tool uh, in a potentially violent encounter. Uh, fortunately, the vast majority of those situations uh, the aggressor saw a tomahawk or a micro pike or other intimidating tool that uh, the customer intended to use. It wasn't just silly brandishing, flashing a tomahawk around, and the aggressor ran away. So even though this video has been mostly about keeping it concealed from the opponent to the last moment, uh, just full disclosure here, most of our customers uh, have fortunately not had to shed blood because the opponent saw what they're getting into and ran away. Now it may not have gone that way. You know, maybe the opponent had uh, a comrade in crime who had a gun on him or some other uh, terrible thing. Maybe they would have just thrown their weapon as hard as they could at you and run the other way. Um, they're definitely, you know, scenario dependent on whether you want to show the weapon or not. Um, but I don't really get into sharing publicly those stories that, you know, customers have shared with me. Kind of goes in the vault. Um, I don't feel comfortable about sharing the, that information. It's not just sharing private information, but it feels like trying to profit off of, you know, potentially someone's terrible day, you know, in case they actually did have to shed blood or got injured in the process. Uh, so, uh, you know, today I'm not gonna be a slave to my words, but we're not gonna go publicly sharing that information. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully this video, you got value out of that. Um, you know, we got, we're gonna have one micro pike, I think, up for sale this week. So definitely be on our mailing list for that. Stingrays, we did make a new batch, but they're uh, completely sold out. So these are all getting made and shipped out. We do have Empress Tomox though. So uh, do check those out. And we do have quills and dick pics. Uh, I'm trying to think about anything else. I think that's, that's about it. So I'm getting really cold here. Uh, you guys, Share this video with a friend so 13 will have watched it. Remember, be edgy.